what up everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to be doing a little update on the cb 1100 i've done a decent amount of upgrades since my last video and i know everybody's been asking but before we get into anything let's give this thing a wash Now that she's clean, let's get some B-roll. She's clean. Let's talk about these upgrades that I've done since the last video. I got my little notes here because I can't remember what I've done. I think it's been about two years since that last video, so let's get into it. So the first thing, most noticeable thing you can probably see is that I took the clip-ons off and I went with the Renthal Ultra Lows. Um, somebody actually commented on my last video or one of my videos um, when I was talking about it's not as comfortable with those clip-ons. You know, as a daily commuter bike, you're just leaning over, your neck's hurting after 20 minutes. So since I'm using this as a commuter, I changed it for the ultra lows. Um, they're awesome, they're black. They feel just like the OEMs, but they do have that lower profile, which makes it look a little more old school. With that, I actually couldn't fit the handlebar mirrors in there anymore because the inside diameter of these ultra lows is actually a lot smaller. It wouldn't fit those mirrors I got on Amazon. So went back with the OEM mirrors and just plastic dipped them black. They're not perfect, but kind of just wanted to see what it would look like, and I'll probably just do a little touch up on the sides where I missed some of the spray. Talking about the exhaust pipe, the exhaust tip, it's still perfect. Um, it sounds amazing, I still love it. Of course, I can, I'll can. i probably still upgrade that exhaust eventually, um, but for now, I think it sounds amazing. I've had no problems. I know a lot of people have been asking if I've had any problems or if I had to tune the bike after putting the exhaust tip on it. I have not, I've not tuned it, I've not done anything. After putting the exhaust tip on and it runs perfectly like a charm, never had an issue. Going over to the seat, I know last time I was talking about trying to get a flat seat, still haven't done that. They're still too overpriced. I'm still eyeballing the like 40, $50 seats that they have on like eBay um, that are just generic cafe racer seats, probably not very comfortable, but I think it'd be worth a shot just seeing if I can get that mounted on here. Um, and I can always switch them maybe in and out on longer rides. I can put this stock one on, but we'll see. For now, we're keeping the old seat. Another thing you might notice is I took off the front fender. Mainly, I just wanted to have a little more aggressive look. Um, obviously with Cafe Racers, the whole idea back in the day was eliminate all the weight, take everything off, make it as naked as possible, and try to hit the fastest speeds possible. Obviously, that's not so much the case with this bike, but I still think it looks kind of cool just being naked in the front. All I have up here is that Super Brace fork stabilizer, which if you haven't seen that video, go check that out. Uh, 10 out of 10, recommend this thing. The, the difference it makes in your ride is unbelievable. And that goes for any other bike, I believe as well, that doesn't have a stabilizer 
this low down on the fork. And maybe the most exciting part. What's up guys, all right, quick commercial break. Make sure you guys go check out my coffee company, Retro Racer Coffee. We have roast for everybody. We have our house blend, your medium dark roast. We have our Bali Blue Moon, which is your dark roast. Perfect for your pour over or your French press, whatever you like. And we also have our espresso blend, which is personally my favorite. It's roasted to order. So if you place an order within one to two days, I'll have it roasted and shipped to you. Also comment below which blend you would love to try and I'll pick a couple of you guys and send you a bag so you can try it out for yourself. And for the rest of you, use this code right here for 15% off your first order, retroracercoffee.com. And let's get back to the video. I finally eliminated the rear fender. I literally just did this about two weeks ago. I've been staring at that ugly fender in the back for years now since I've had the bike, wanting to take it off, wanting, trying to figure out how to do it, not wanting to pay four or $500 for the fender eliminator kit online. Well, I finally one day just took a weekend and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna take this thing apart and I'll figure out how to eliminate it. I'm sure I can make it work. So I literally just started unbolting, clipping wires, clipping off the brake light, the, the blinkers. Um, and funny enough, I actually used one of the big brackets that was being used on the old fender, and I used it to mount the taillight and the license plate. All I bought was the license plate holder, which I was actually trying to mount on the side of the wheel, um, but ended up working and looking a lot better in the back because when I didn't have the license plate in the back, it just looked a little too open and naked here back by the rear tire. So left the license plate on the back. I also purchased these two little lights that actually act as bolts and they hold the license plate onto the holder, but obviously they're also lit up so you can have your license plate light, which is a requirement here in Florida at least. Also, the tail light was super easy. Uh, I think I paid also maybe 15, 20, 30 dollars for this little tail light and it's super bright. I was a little worried it might not be bright enough for riding. But one, I don't ride much at night unless I get stuck somewhere. Um, and two, it's actually super bright. Might even be brighter than the stock. Um, it's not as big, but it's super bright. And with the blinkers, I took off the big side brackets here and I just ended up mounting the blinkers straight on the brackets that hang off under the seat. Um, that way it kind of brings the blinkers in a little bit and they don't stick out as far. Um, I did have to trim a little piece of metal that's on the blinker. If you do take it apart, you'll see uh, it has a little nook that keeps it from spinning. I literally just trimmed that off and bolted it straight to the side bracket here. So that was really the biggest thing I did. Um, other than that, I did get the quad lock. Made a video about that. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know what you guys think of the updates that I've done so far since the last video. Make sure you subscribe and don't forget to go check out my company, Retro Racer Coffee. See you in the next video. Peace.